Hello GSF families, welcome to the second episode of Meet Week Fun. We know that from last week episodes that there are some families who have experienced and tried the recipes. Thank you for those who have practiced the recipe at home. And here are some of their comments. Mirari and Jenny said that this is my first time baking brownies and the recipe was so easy to follow. My husband loves it and he said it is nice and moist in the inside with the crunchy top. Tika's cookies recipe is really delicious. My family loves them. They are crunchy on the outer and very soft in the middle. They are the best of the both worlds. And many of you also have tried the pizza recipes and here are the comments. Danny Wati said, the texture and the taste is just perfect and I love the burning taste. Remind me of the Italian pizza that I cooked with wood. And also John Chang's family have practiced making the healthy drinks. As you can see, they enjoy it from the pictures. And Julia Wiantno, mother of two said, yes, this is serious cooking by serious moms using serious kitchen appliances and it is seriously fun. And today, we are going to have some more exciting menus. We have prepared for you a three course meals. We are going to start with the appetizer by Janet and Lydia. It's called the Crazy Rich Asian Pot Stickers. And we will have the main course is Simon Homemade Shabu Shabu. And we will have the Tegu and Sofia Lenny's Cinnamon Rolls for your dessert. And last but not least, let's have Natasha's Healthy Drinks. And Let's dive in! Good afternoon, I'm Janet. Hi, I'm Lydia. Today we're going to teach you how to make dumplings from crazy rich Asians. In Mandarin, they're also called pokey. And in America, they're called pot stickers. But wherever you're going to eat them, you're going to be calling them delicious. delicious. So let's get started. Here's what you're going to need for this recipe. First we have ground chicken. We have ground chicken here um, instead of ground pork like the recipe calls for because that's what we could find at the store. But next we have um, shrimp that has been chopped up. Um, we have some chives and scallions, green onions. We have some ginger, garlic, sesame oil, soy sauce, chicken broth, and pepper, cornstarch, sugar, and salt. We also have some store-bought dumpling wrappers. Let's mix our ingredients. First, you add the garlic to the meat and the ginger and the chicken broth. And at this point, you'll also want to add a little bit of water. Take your chopsticks and stir in one circular motion. So now we're gonna keep on going by adding our soy sauce, the sesame oil, and all that in the dish. So that is cornstarch, pepper, sugar, and salt. and then you keep on mixing in the same circular direction. Let's keep going with our ingredients. Add your chives and the green onions. And again, we'll stir it together in one circular motion. So now we're gonna start with wrapping our dumplings. So we have a stack of dumpling wrappers right here and we've covered it with a damp paper towel so that they don't get dry. So now we're going to take some of the filling, make sure you don't take too much or else your dumpling won't close. And then you're going to stick your finger in some water and put it all the way around the rim of the wrapper. You may have to dip multiple times. And then you're going to fold like a taco and start on one side and pinch and fold. Pinch and fold and pinch and fold and pinch and fold. And you're going to keep on doing that until you get to the end of the wrapper. You may need to push down a little bit of the filling. And there you have a dumpling. Ta-da! Heat your oil in a non-stick pan over a medium heat and put your pot stickers in the pan. Mix some water and a little bit of flour or cornstarch together in a, in a small bowl and then pour it into the pan and quickly put the lid 
over your pot stickers. Let it cook for five to six minutes. So now we're going to make a dipping sauce for our dumplings. So we have two parts of rice vinegar, half a part of chili oil, and you can adjust this based on how spicy you want it to be, and then one part of soy sauce. And you're going to mix it together. Make sure you get all the chili oil. Mix it, and then there you have it. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you and your family can make these crazier Asian dumplings. We'll see you next time. Enjoy. Good morning. I'm going to show you how to make a home cook shabu shabu. Something very simple and very easy to do. The first thing you need is the chicken stock. And chicken from the bones is delicious. And if you want to put, you can actually put whole chicken. And now we have the onions and the green onions. We have two stock of celery. Let's get started. We cut the green onions into equal parts and also the celery. And now I'm peeling out the onions and I'm uh, cutting into quarters. Then we put the chicken into the pot. We pour hot water until it covers the chicken. We want to make sure that it's well covered because we don't want to keep putting water in. Put it on a heat until it boils and reduce it to medium low so it simmer for another one hour to one and a half hours. Okay, good. I'm going to put it in the stove right now and we will boil it for about one hour to one and a half hours. See you later. For the dasi broth, it is optional. I put in dry fish and bonito flakes. Boil for 10 minutes until the bonito flakes sink and then after that we stop cooking and let it cool. Now we are going to make the pansu sauce. We put 3 tablespoons of soy sauce. We put 3 to 5 lemon juice. I like it a bit, you know, citrusy. We put the dashi stock, 4 tablespoons. And we put in four tea, uh, teaspoon of mirin. Now we're going to make the sauce for the shabu shabu. So number one is the sesame sauce and then the mirin sauce. So if you look at this, I'm using a traditional way of doing it. I'm going to continue grinding it but before that for modern days you may want to use the um, blender just steps real real quick on it 
<sighs> and it's done. Okay, now we're going to make the sauce. So first of all, I will have the sesame uh, seeds. After you have put the sesame seeds, it's four to you know six or eight tablespoon um, of sesame grinded sesame seed, and then put two tablespoon of dashi. Two teaspoon of rice vinegar, and two teaspoon of mirin. I put two teaspoon of lime or lemon juice and stir it well. And if it is too liquidy, what you need to do is I like to add more sesame seed because my dear husband like it a little bit thicker. And you can add a pinch of salt and sugar. And our family, we like it a little bit sweet. Then we add miso into it. Miso give it the saltiness which is wonderful. Now it's for part three, which is the vegetable. We want to have the cabbage, white cabbage, uh, which is most important together with the spinach. And the other greens, it's up to the family, what you like to eat. And we have uh, different types of mushrooms. When we cut the cabbage, we separate the stiff, the hard part of the stem aside so we can cook it first then we can cut the softer part with the other vegetables so when we're eating on the table it's easy to cook so we cut the spinach spinach is very easy to cook very fast we cut the onions onions give the sweetness and we have the carrots and we also cut the tofu into cubes into six pieces This is the setup for the shabu shabu. So we are right now outside in the veranda. So if you look over here, this is the vegetables prepared, cow cut up, and this is the shabu shabu beef that you can buy and slice thinly. And this is the udum, and then this is the ponzu sauce and the sesame sauce, and this is the daikon that we put into the ponzu later and we also have the tofu yes and we have rice over here and i have a mixed rice with brown rice over here and over here we have the dashi sauce so this is more of the fish sauce and the uh, and the seaweed so you can choose whichever you want uh -huh. over at the chicken stock or at the dashi and the chicken stock is more of uh, you know the Gemang Siman Supadno home recipe. So, dear, would you like to come and join us for sure. the meal? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So, yes. So we're going to have a, uh, you know, have a piece over here, and I hope that you will have the same have a wonderful time with your family. May God bless you, and may you have a good, good time eating together. Classic cinnamon roll for our breakfast. Ingredients are half cup of mashed potato and then potato water, uh, two spoon of butter, and then the sugar, salt. We have this and hot water. 
right? And then the uh, yeast, the dry yeast. Okay, one egg and four and a quarter of the all-purpose flour. Combine yeast with the warm water and then you mix it a bit. Then combine butter, sugar, salt, and the hot water. And then also the uh, mashed potato and the potato water all in a bowl. And then you add one cup flour egg into the yeast mixture and also the potato mixture then you continue adding half cup of flour at a time until the soft dough forms then you place it in the grease bowl then cover it up and then let it rest for one hour until it's double the size and then you roll the dough into a rectangle shape after it's, it's a nicely shaped spread the melted butter evenly sprinkle the sugar and cinnamon evenly also Then roll up tightly in a lengthwise, and then after that you cut into 12 pieces with the sharp knife or the dental floss. Then you let it rise for 30 to 45 minutes until it's nearly double again. And after that, you sprinkle a bit with the melted butter and then put it in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Tada! Yay! Our cinnamon rolls! Ready to eat! Natasha and I'm from JAC of Young Adults Group. Today I will be showing you how to make two healthy drinks. The first drink is citrus based and the second drink will be milk based. These two drinks are good for your immune system. They help prevent flu and they also help to soothe your aching joints. And furthermore, they are good for your digestion. So without further ado, let's get on to the recipe. So to start the recipe, I will explain to you the ingredients that we will use. We will use CM oranges and we will cut the lemongrass into two parts and we will use the lower part for the recipe and the upper part for the garnish. And next we will use medium sized turmeric, water and honey. You want to cut the lemongrass into 1cm pieces and here I will only use half of it because I don't want the aroma to be too strong in my drink. Alright now, you want to peel the turmeric. When peeling the turmeric, I recommend you to use gloves to avoid yellow stains as they are hard to wash off and you can just use plastic gloves like I did in the video. And what you want to do next is grate the turmeric And pour in the cut lemongrass into the saucepan, add water, and boil for 5 minutes until the solution turns stock orange. 
After 5 minutes, you can remove it from the heat and set it aside. While waiting for it to cool down, you can cut the oranges. You can use both CM or navel oranges because both varieties have generally have a lot of juice. Now you can squeeze the juice out of the orange. Remember not to squeeze it too much because if you squeeze them too much, it might become bitter. Or you can also use a juicer if you want to. Afterwards, you can pour the orange juice into the herbal mixture and stir it well. And pour the almost jamu mixture into the serving cups using a fine mesh strainer. You can add 2 teaspoons of honey into each serving and don't forget to stir well. Now this is optional, but you can top it off with thin lemongrass sticks if you want to. You can use it for stirring later on. Add two ice cubes or more, but you can also enjoy this drink hot. So if you wish to enjoy it hot, then you don't have to wait for it to cool down. Now the next drink is ginger milk tea. You need two ginger roots and here I use red ginger and then you can use black tea and this is optional but you can use cinnamon powder to garnish and honey. Don't forget the milk and water. So here's the first step that you want to do. You want to peel the ginger and here's a tip from me. If your ginger has an arm or more arms popping out like this you can cut it crosswise like I did in the video and that will make your peeling process easier to do. If you have a scale at home, you can do it like this. If you use full leaf tea like me, it's gonna be 4 to 5 teaspoons but if you use ground tea, then it would be 2 to 3 teaspoons. And now you can pour the tea leaves and ginger into the saucepan. Then add 250 milliliters of water. Boil with medium heat for 5 minutes. You can occasionally stir the mixture while it's boiling. After 5 minutes, add fresh milk into the boiling mixture. Lower the heat and leave it boiling for another 2 minutes. When your milk tea is done, you can use a strainer to pour the milk tea into the serving cups. If you like sweet, you can add 2 teaspoons or more honey into each cup and stir well. You can also garnish the drink with ground cinnamon and there you go, the drink's ready. I like to dip cookies into my milk tea, they taste so good together. 
Enjoy your afternoon tea. Thank you. Three course meals are ready. Yes. Shall we give a try? Of course. Okay. Let right. me yes. Let me try the crazy rich Asian pot sticker. Mmm. The sauce. Mmm. Super tasty yes. and very soft, juicy inside. Hmm. You should try it. Well, now let's go to the main course. I mean, I've made shabu shabu many times, right? But I always use the ready-made ponzu sauce that I buy in the supermarket. This time, I get to make everything from scratch. The ponzu sauce, the sesame sauce, so I cannot wait to try it. Okay, I'll right, try the beef. Together. Yes. Let me get the beef. And the sesame sauce. I want to try the ponzu sauce, so I'm going to mix the Grated radish mm. with the ginger. I'm gonna mix it with the ponzu sauce and I'm gonna taste my homemade ponzu sauce. The sesame is just amazing taste. It's different with the one that we bought. Mm. It's super good. The sweetness, the tanginess, the sourness is just perfect. How now, about the soup? We don't need to buy the soup. Yes. Let me dip for the soup. Mm, clear but tasty. Yes. Very good. Homemade shabu shabu. Thank you, Simon. What's next? Yeah, dessert. I know. Let me try this. I'm curious about the cinnamon roll that use potato. I heard the secret is in a potato. Let's mm. get a bite. I am not a dessert person, but I will give a try of this. Mmm. <laughs> I love the cinnamon taste of it. Mmm. I cannot describe the, the moist of the bread. It's just different. Mm. I think we really need to use this. Yes. Thank you, Sophie and Tabu, for the recipe. Now, let's try our drink. Shall we? Shall we? Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. The ginger taste, the orange taste is just there. What and a nice way to end this meal, this three course meal that is made by all our friends and families from GSF. Yeah. Well, on this episode, we want to thank Lydia and Janet Batangari for their crazy rich Asian pot stickers and Simon's family. And for their homemade shabu shabu, our lovely cinnamon rolls by Sophie and Tegu's family, and last but not least, the healthy drinks from Natasha. So with this, we will wrap up our three course meals. We encourage you to try with your family at home and enjoy it. And 